shape certainly isn't Darth Vader. Have you got anything special that you need to tell us about here with Vader? Um, only our magnificent weapon at the end there, which will cause a lot of damage if we can point it in the right direction. If I had a penny for every time a bloke <laughs> said to me I've got a magnificent weapon, I would be rich by now. Yes, transparent 8mm polycarbonate sheet armour. The spinning disc is mounted vertically and sticks half out of the robot, but it can't self-right. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams in the control pods. On the left there, Paul Rose, the captain of the Vader team, and Wild Thing, Nick and Isabel Adams. On the right-hand side here, the Stag and their captain Terry Martin. On the left, UFO and their captain Peter Withers. In the arena for the house robot, Sergeant Bash, the front pincers, the flamethrower, lick of flame. And there's the kill again with the crushing claws and the lance to penetrate. Three, two, one. This for a place in round two of this heat. Two robots will survive this stage, don't forget. A bit tentative early on. You can see UFO there in the middle. There's the great shove of the stag beetle onto the back of Wild Thing. There at the controls of the stag is Mark Pepper, a technology consultant driving. You can see there Vader and that uh, vertical spinning wheel once again. Wild Thing, very tenacious and dogged Wild Thing has proven over the years. Reached the semi-final of its heat in Robot Wars 5. We're seeing there uh, young David Martin in the stag team, 11 years of age. Wild Thing caught in the pincers there, I think, of the stag. UFO very tentative, and so to Vader. This is KG. I think the chicken's come off. Did I see the chicken there? The stag had come off? Well, I mean, that's that's it then, isn't it, really? It's powerless now. The stag picked up by Sir Killalot. Sir Killalot, don't think if you've not seen him beforehand that he's going to topple over when he does that sort of dance. Not so. Now, there we can see 15 year old Isabel Adams at the control of Wild Thing. Very experienced at Robot Wars with her dad, the Adams family. Wild Thing comes back on the attack. That looks a formidable play this time around. The pit release has been activated by UFO. In comes Vader. It's beginning now to hot up a little bit. Wild Thing circling to try and get a purchase on Vader. UFO in there as well. The Redbot is counting out the stag, I think, in the CPZ. There goes the stag, counted out. Any second to kill off. We'll finally finish it off. I think they've been immobilised too long and counted out. There's the chicken. The stag's vital weapon. There's Vader on the side wall. Angle grinder. Wild thing, though, is taking punishment. Should it go to a judge's decision, it could be decisive. They mark on control, style, damage and aggression. There are the controls of the stag, Mark Pepper. I was sure they were counted out. Wild thing on the flame pit. As Vader's disc stopped spinning, it has! Now, what has happened here to the weaponry of Vader? It has stopped spinning. It's 20 kilos in weight. Well, that doesn't matter one jot if it's not working. UFO has prodded and pushed its way through the heat with great effect. The stag, I think, is going to end up not as a stag beetle, but uh, as a dung beetle, really. Oh, UFO, what are you doing? Cease is called just before they went down to the pit. I think the judges will be called on here as well. The stag definitely go out there in the pit of oblivion, but we're going to have to go to the judges for the rest. They'll be looking at style, control, damage and aggression. Craig, let's just have a look at the highlights once again. Damage caused there, the stag wheel came off, or tyre, I should say. Wild Thing causing damage. UFO slammed against the sidewall. Vader looked very strong at this stage. Yeah, that was the end of the stag. Wild Thing taking damage there. UFO looking cagey but controlled. Coming in on the attack of Vader that finished limply. The judges are going to have to have a hard decision here. UFO pushing the stag in, but nearly going in themselves. The 
judges have made their decision. And this was not easy, very close. But the judges have gone for Vader and Wild Thing. What's this stuff? Because people are finding it quite hard to get through, aren't they? It's polycarb, it's eight mil polycarb. It's been penetrated a little bit, but it's quite resistant for impact. It absorbs a lot of energy. And eight mil is thicker than the average robot? Mm, it's probably thinner, actually, than the average robot. Do you think? Yeah, there's it's a lot of it, though, so we've had to go thinner to try and keep the weight down. Right, OK. But Agrobot, not worry. Well, it's less worrying than the other one we could have gone against. OK, good. <laughs> so it's good news for you, this draw. Team, Paul Rose, Simon Latham, and Philip Claythorpe. Agrobot three boys, the Leach family, Peter, Bob, and John. In the arena for the house robots, the tusks and spinning flywheel of Matilda and Dead Metal and the Pincers in the saw blade. Two, one, activate. Terrific battle here. Agrobot three with all the experience, but Vader with that great spinning blade. Also, it has it, its spikes and scoop as well can cause damage. Oh, and immediately does on Agrobot 3, lifting 100 kilos in weight and backing away to have another onslaught. And as that slam, bam, no thank you, ma'am, hurt Agrobot 3. The Vader boys look on. Agrobot 3, to me, does not look the most mobile of machines. And the Leech boys are worried here. I wonder now whether the two 500-watt drive motors have gone, disturbed by the slab. Because certainly, Agrobot is in danger. Dead Metal is in there, the Redbot takes a look. Vader's blade spins. Agrobot are heading out here, I think. In Series 3, they lost in their heat final to Blade. In Robot Wars 4, they were seeded, and they lost in the heats to Smitty. And here, Agrobot 3 are out of Robot Wars, the Sixth Wars. That is a surprise. Vader looked good for me. Agrobot 3 hammered early on in this battle. And that is what caused the damage, that initial bump and bounce. They never got going. They just look stunned, don't they? Dead Metal about to put the frightening-looking one, Agrobot 3. Now, you may paint a robot and enter Robot Wars and think it's frightening, but look at Dead Metal. That is truly frightening. Cease. I think the grin was a grimace. Agrobot immobilised, then tossed into the pit of oblivion. Vader, go through to the heat final! <laughs> Guys, um... That was fairly easy, wasn't it? Walk in the park. Wasn't bad at all. I would say it was a very carefully aimed blow, but I think I'd be lying if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your tactic when you came into the fight? What do you think you were going to try and do? You must have thought it was going to be harder than that. Well, the biggest weakness we have is against flippers, because our machine isn't particularly low at the front, so we wanted to try and avoid their, basically, uh, the, the front of their machine. Yeah. So we wanted to try and go then from the side yeah. and just try and hit something vulnerable. Okay. Which you obviously done. So. Which is what you did, yeah. <laughs> Immobilise them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it! Team Vader! Come on, guys. OK, here's the announcement. It's Vader versus Wild Thing. Yeah. I just hope we don't have the same thing we had in the first round, where we ended up hooked together for most of the fight. We ended up just dragging each other around quite... Have you worked out a way to avoid that? Um, well, the only thing we can really do is just try and go for the more structural part rather than going for the um, centre of the bodywork. I'm going to drive straight into their disc. Are you? Robotiers, stand by. Some of the heat finalists, Paul Rose, Simon Latham and Philip Playthorpe, with their Vader machine. And Nick and Isabel Adams. Nick at the controls, Isabel at the weaponry. 
of Wild Thing. The Heat final has Shunt in the arena, representing the house robots with the bulldozer blade and the axe, and Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, activate. Wild Thing with the high-speed vertical cutting disc, Vader with the vertical spinning disc. And that comes into play first. Wild Thing, a lot lower. Lighter, 97 kilos, three kilos lighter. It's the quicker of the two robots, more maneuverable across the arena floor to get in to cause damage and away from damage. And Shunt slams down with the diamond edge axe onto the armament of Vader. Wild Thing clinging on. Isabel Adams at the controls of the weapons. One little tactic they could use if they can flick Vader, it can't self-right. One and a half centimetres of ground clearance. I think at the back of Vader, that's its Achilles heel. But a real push and shove match developing. Wild Thing coming back onto the attack on Vader. Blade hits Blade. Sparks will fly if that continues onto the flame pit now. Don't forget the winner of this through to the series semi-final. And already some tough robots have made it there. Pit, 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 I think they're calling. Are they calling flame pit? Wild thing has been there before. Is Vader moving here? I think Vader is in trouble. Wild thing glances, the weaponry is still moving but there is no forward momentum for Vader, or is there? There's Nick Adams at the control of Wild Thing. Vader is going nowhere fast. Wild Thing trying to cause damage onto the transparent 8mm polycarbonate sheet armament of Vader. There at the control, Simon Latham of Vader, the new boys to Robot Wars. And they're being taught a lesson here in durability. Down comes the axe of Shunt, and that has wedged the Vader weapon. A decisive blow for the house robots. They get the speed up again for the weaponry. But it just stopped them absolutely dead in their tracks. The ref bot comes in. Wild Thing has done a lot of good work here, and I think their blade may just have serrated the armament there of Vader. Difficult to see from this angle, but I do think they just got a grip there with a circular saw. Wild Thing has taken damage. You can see the scratches. I don't know how superficial they are. Again, the axe comes down. Wild Thing on top here for me. But it's been a good old battle, hasn't it? Shunt now, pushing Vader. Vader, the meat in the sandwich, not too pleasant a thought. Driven away across the arena floor, onto the floor flipper. You really don't want to do that. Wild Thing giving chase. Very experienced. Hypnotist beat them in the semi-finals of Rebel Wars 4. Panic attack in the semi-finals of Rebel Wars 3. There's the pit. You can hear the release alarm button sounding off. Side by side, they Cease. dance. Cease is called. It goes to the Robot Wars judge's decision. Lots of pushing and shoving, lots of sticking together. It's too close to call. We're going to have to go to the judges. And while they're making up their minds, let's review the highlights. We wanted destructibility. Boo hoo, they stuck like glue. But it was a tactical battle, and Wild Thing, they were aggressive. They took a little bit of damage there, I think. Only superficial. It wasn't the most controlled driving of Wild Thing, but throughout. They were wily. They were pushing Vader with good tactical nous into the CPZs, onto the arena sidewall weaponry, into the house robots, and that could be the most destructive blow of all. Well, the judges have made the decision, and it's unanimous. Based on style, control, damage, and aggression, they've gone for the ninth seed, Wild Thing! Nice. For the night seats. They so are no indeed. disgrace there. No, and they've never ever been stopped either. No, I mean they go on and on and on, they, they do. But well, you came closer um, 
to defeat them, I thought. Um, he just kept getting stuck together all the time, though. Why was that? I think it's that their disc just basically gets stuck in our side armour. And once that happens, we haven't got enough traction to try and sort of sort of wrestle ourselves loose. Yeah. It was a nice waltz, though, wasn't it? It was, very, yeah, it was, it was, it was an elegant dance, actually, wasn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it, Team Vader!